Yeah, this is Billiam. Fall is here and I have nothing else to do besides watch way too much Scooby-Doo, like way too much Scooby-Doo. But there's just something so appealing to classic Scooby. From the spooky atmospheric setting, the music, its villains, it's got such a nice vibe to it. It's not this stunning or great accomplishment in the history of animation, but it must work because I can't think of another franchise that has had this sheer volume of content over this long a period of time. And I don't know why, but I've chosen to conquer it all? I'm not even the biggest Scooby-Doo fan, but for some reason, uh, this is my Everest. Last year, I went through a bunch of Scooby shows to see how different creative teams chose to portray the same premise, teenagers and their dog going around solving mysteries and debunking paranormal hoaxes. However, Scooby is a show that has always had to change things up from new art design, different actors playing the characters, unique premises. It's a varied franchise, but while the original series is iconic as iconic could be, one era of the show has almost matched it in its infamy. I don't think it would be hyperbolic to say that Scooby-Doo's nephew, Scrappy-Doo, would fit nicely under a steamroller. There are few characters that have reached the level of popular hatred and infamy as Scrappy do. The only ones that really come to mind are like Jar Jar Binks and Baby Nut. Scrappy is so hated, the official franchise doesn't even mention him anymore, except to occasionally throw him under the steamroller. He's a punchline. Look away, Daphne. We all promised each other that we would never speak of him. Not ever. He's been purposefully portrayed as unlikable. Oh, he's there, Scooby. My name is Scrappy, and I've been here longer than all of you. But the only problem is, I kind of like Scrappy-Doo. I watch these shows in syndication on Cartoon Network and Boomerang 20 to 30 years after they originally aired. To me, Scrappy-Doo wasn't this annoying character who hogged the spotlight. It's just some Scooby-Doo episodes had Scrappy-Doo in them. But that's not the case at all. For a good chunk of Scooby's classic run, Scrappy was front and center. I've always argued the hate is overstated, but now I have to put my money where my mouth is. Uh, for this video, I watched like way too much Scooby-Doo. Like just for this video, I watched the entire run of Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo. It starts off just like 16 episodes of regular Scooby-Doo, except there's this new cast member, but then it quickly devolves into one of the most mind-numbing things I've ever seen that just drags on uh, and on, and it barely even resembles Scooby-Doo anymore. And there's 99 episodes of that. Now it's here where other YouTubers will say they did this for you the audience, but I didn't do this for you. I did this for me. I saw that episode count 99 and I said, I have to do this. I didn't gain a greater appreciation, understanding, or was enlightened by watching all of it. I could have just watched a few, but I just wanted to be able to say I watched all of it because welcome to Scooby-Thon 2, the redemption of Scrappy-Doo this Halloween season and later into the fall because I started this kind of late. I'm gonna go through the entire run of Scrappy-Doo content. It's way too much Scooby-Doo, but if I can finish my point before my brain gives me its two weeks notice and quits, I just might be able to redeem the little guy. Isn't that right, permanent addition to the cast of Billiam? Some sea monkeys. <laughs> Before we continue, I just want to thank today's sponsor, Raycon. Raycon Premium True Wireless Earbuds are here to help you out. If you go into the store and you try to buy some of their premium wireless earbuds, they're going to be like, hey, you have the whole money, you have half the money. And so what are you going to do? Buy one earbud? No. Raycon's here to help you out. The new everyday E25s are great. That's right, from Monday to Sunday, these babies got you covered. Just pray it's not a leap year. It's great build quality, great design, and great sound. And it's true wireless. None of that fibbing wireless from the wired headphone competitors of Raycon. Oh no, it's Raycon's greatest enemy, the wire, here to choke me and to get caught on gym equipment. E25s block out enough sound so I don't have to be alone with my thoughts. They come in a bunch of fun colors and have lots of bass, so they're really fun to listen to. So if you're interested, go to buyraycon.com slash billiam or click the link in the description to get 15% off of your order. Thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring this video. 
despite being a smash hit at episode one, as early as season two, Scooby-Doo was already trying to add new elements to the show to mix things up. First, it was the musical chase. Then the show changed format to an hour long mystery featuring a variety of different guest stars. And then they experimented with new cast members like scooby Dum, who looks like a Scooby version of Gooby. So it wasn't a surprise when ABC executives wanted to add a new character to the lineup to shake things up. Iwo Takamoto, the character designer for Scooby-Doo, suggested using Henry Hawk as a model for Scooby's new sidekick, a Warner character who would take on foes 10 times his size. Scrappy was a committee character, with his development being meticulously examined by executives under a microscope. The introductory episode script faced many, many rewrites, and they went through a rigorous casting process to find the right voice. Voice acting legend Mel Blanc was the first pick. <laughs> What's up, David? <laughs> but unobtainable because he was expensive, and Don Masick, the voice of Scooby, had the perfect voice, but they decided to go with this guy Lenny Weinrib instead because... Scooby and Scrappy-Doo aired on September 22nd, 1979, just days away from the 10th anniversary of the first episode of Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Happy birthday. Here's your nephew. Uncle Scooby? <laughs> Hi, I'm Scrappy-Doo. In the intro, Scrappy introduces himself as Scooby's nephew, and the episode goes on like Scrappy has always been with the gang. The Blue Scarab is a pretty okay classic Scooby episode. It features a comic book artist who's haunted by a character he created, the Blue Scarab. The Blue Scarab is just a little scamp. <laughs> there he goes again. I gotta say, having watched way too much Scooby-Doo, there is a refreshing energy Scrappy brings to things. Get him now, Uncle Scoob! If you compare this to season one of Where Are You, there is definitely a quality shift, but if you compare it to the last season before it, it's not like it was a sudden 180 turn in quality. As Scooby-Doo went on, slowly the series was pushing Daphne, Fred, and Velma to the side. In Scooby-Doo Where Are You season three, which is also the Scooby-Doo show season three, don't ask me to explain that, I will cry, Scooby and Shaggy hogged more and more of the spotlight. I think Scooby-Doo is best when it strikes a balance, but slowly the scales started shifting. This season continues that shift, but instead of a star duo, it's now a star trio. So let's talk about the precious little angel. He's supposed to be a little naive puppy who admires his uncle Scooby and is sometimes getting in trouble because he's all gung-ho about going into the fight, the mystery solving. Early on, his stature can create a few funny moments. Okay, you monsters, put up your claws. I'll take you on one at a time. All right, we'll be fair. Whoops of ten. Let me at him. Ruff. But they do the bit way too often. When it doesn't land, it really doesn't land. He's supposed to be this naive puppy. But because of the voice, he just comes off like a angry, incompetent, oops, grown man inside the body of a puppy. Sorry, Shaggy, but what do you expect from a puppy? Scrappy's voice is not cute. <laughs> But sometimes in these earlier seasons, they draw him to be much more appealing than he's depicted later on. I mean, this Scrappy's like a weird gremlin Pokemon thing, but this... <sighs> Scrappy's admiration of Scooby is genuinely charming. Scooby is this big, lovable doofus, and I love seeing Scrappy gas him up. You captured the star creature? That's amazing! That's because my Uncle Scooby is amazing! Though so sometimes the way he gets put into danger is infuriating. Okay now, Scrappy. We want you to stay here for your own safety. Oh, ooh. Scrappy! I'm not moving! I'm not moving! Scrappy! Shaggy and Scooby-Doo on their own has always been one of my least favorite parts of Scooby-Doo. They're just meddling fools. But having this little sidekick trying to do his best and unknowingly ruining their attempts to escape can actually be really funny sometimes. Like, I think we lost him. Don't worry, guys. I found him for you. Bowman candles. Well, candles are what we need no matter where they're from. And there are some pretty solid episodes in this bunch. The Night Ghoul of Wonderworld may be one of my favorite classic episodes, period. The episode features the gang traveling to a robot-populated theme park a la Westworld, which they do a lot. And Velma and the gang team up with robot Sherlock Holmes to take down someone imitating Jack the Ripper. Though they call him the Night Ghoul of London. And guess what? Sherlock Holmes is like, let's solve the mystery. But he's wrong and Velma kicks his ass and mystery solving. She just T-poses on him as the greatest mystery solver. Jinkies. Velma? Jinkies. Velma, are you okay? Jinkies. I'm sure are glad you okay, we can Velma? get tickets for tonight's Vanny You're not Awards. sounding like yourself. This other episode has the most hilariously simple trap the gang has ever used. I've got it. I've got it. <laughs> okay. I don't remember this episode too much, but this guy's introduction had me laughing. Those fools can never stop me now. Oh, ever!
<laughs> Just an alien bug monster driving a regular ass car. The Snake Demon is also a weirdly good episode. There's some funny animations and jokes that stick with you. Shaggy, Uncle Scooby, we're in Miami. My favorite, devil's food cake with double fudge. Huh? <laughs> However, so much of the show feels tired. The writers were struggling to find new monsters and premises. It features the lamest villain of Scooby-Doo's rogues gallery, the Sky Skeleton. <laughs> He's like a regular skeleton, except he has a pilot's license. He flies American Scare Lines. The demon bear, some dude's frozen ghost. It's the ghost of Jeremiah Pratt! I mean, the ghost of Jeremiah Pratt. I watched this like two weeks ago, and I could not tell you for the life of me what this guy's deal was. <laughs> Much of the show just feels tired. There's this reoccurring joke where Shaggy will mention being a coward. Here he pulls out a coward's credit cards and I'm just like, okay, now you're just throwing out adjectives. Despite Scooby-Doo having so many iconic recurring jokes, if you go back and watch it, Velma isn't losing her glasses often, Freddy doesn't say, let's split up, gang, and Scooby doesn't have to be bribed with Scooby snacks all the time. These cartoons aren't creatively invigorating, but they tried to write new jokes. I guess we lost them. That's okay, Uncle Scoob. I found him for you. Scrappy isn't annoying because his character is the worst thing ever. It's because the writers didn't try to blend Scrappy into the mix well. He's always spitting off his catchphrase, messing things up, and being a jerk. Ta -da -da -da, ta -da! Pa -pa -pa Puppy power! But there are actually things about Scrappy foundationally that work really well within the Scooby-Doo formula. Honestly, this is just a pretty standard season of Scooby-Doo that just so happens to have Scrappy in it. Scrappy is an inoffensive addition to Scrappy-Doo. I mean, he's no worse than Scooby-Dumb, but when compared to the last few seasons, it's actually pretty status quo. I think Scrappy addresses the wrong problems the show had. In a lot of classic Scooby-Doo, Fred, Daphne, and Velma are kind of boring. So when choosing to add a new element of the show, why not focus on the half of the gang they thought were the problem? Scrappy being added pushes them to the side even more. Before the dynamic was, the gang would, you know, push Scooby and Shaggy to go into dangerous situations, but now Scrappy does that. I got you now! So they don't really all fit together. Oh yeah? We'll just see about that we will, cause my Uncle Scooby is fearless and ferocious, and so am I! Scrappy! Scrappy worked out well for Scooby-Doo. Ratings were up and instead of getting canceled, the show was renewed for three more seasons. At this point, a lot of Hanna-Barbera shows had shifted from a half hour format to a segmented series sharing airtime with other seven minute cartoons. And that would include these seasons of Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo. So how do you adapt Scooby-Doo into a much shorter time frame? You cut out the things that make it Scooby-Doo. Gone are the mysteries. Gone is half the gang. Gone is the spooky atmosphere. Casually running into real monsters? Sure, why not? Although Scrappy helped in the ratings, Scooby was not the giant he once was. Despite sharing show titles before, this was the first time Scooby-Doo took second billing into Richie Rich of all people. Yo, Scrappy looks pissed. Uh, Scrappy is also voiced by Don Messick now because uh, Lenny Weinrib wanted more money. Ta -da 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 -da! Puppy power! Da -da 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 -da. Puppy power! Don Messick's Scrappy is overall more appealing, but I don't think his tough Scrappy is better. Those early moments with Wine Rib were Scrappy's best moments. The few times where the jokes were fresh, that's when Scrappy was best. My Uncle Scooby's busy inspecting my Scrappy trap, so I'm gonna splat you for him! But honestly, I think Messick Scrappy is better for the longevity of the character because the most important part of Scrappy is his admiration for Scooby. That's what motivates him to be aggressive and when that's something cute, everything else is more tolerable. Okay, Buster, put him up. Hey, let me at him. For maybe 10 episodes, like 30 pushing it, not 99. All right, episode one, Shaggy, Scooby, and Scrappy are camping and they're abducted by aliens. Now they're just goofing around, I, I guess, going from the last episode to this one is like Whiplash. This is just a completely different show. <laughs> Where to start? It's the most mindless, brain-numbing thing I've ever seen. Unpacking this show is so difficult. I don't even know how to describe it. It's like putting together a puzzle 
with a bunch of miscellaneous puzzle pieces stuffed in a drawer. There's no mystery here. There's like a paranormal or like fantasy thing happening every episode. They do Pinocchio, Jack and the Beanstalk, Alice in Wonderland, Star Wars, Wizard of Oz. Follow, 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 follow the yellow brick tone. What a bunch of bananas. Usually Scooby, Shaggy, and Scrappy are driving the mystery machine or are just like wandering somewhere. Then something happens and someone starts chasing them and they run around for a bit until something else happens and then the episode ends. I I'm sorry, I know that description wasn't enlightening for you, but that's that's the best way I know how to describe it. Uh, sea monkeys, you got any suggestions? Yeah, I guess I can break down an episode so you can understand why that's the best description. So Scrappy, Shaggy, and Scooby are riding through the Andes Mountains. Scrappy finds an ancient temple with a perfectly temperate climate, you know, just behind those rocks over there. They go inside and meet a cat, then Scrappy tries to fight the cat. Put him up, pussy cat! Are they still allowed to say that in kids' shows? I'm not advocating for it not to be allowed or anything, but like at some point, the other meaning of the word. I guess people probably just try to avoid it now. Put him up, pussy! Scrappy! Uh, so they run away, but then they run into the cat's owner, some sort of cat wizard, and the cat wizard shrinks them. Now they're small and getting chased by the cat. Throw some apples at them, why don't you? They get away on a paper airplane by throwing grapes at the wizard, and then the wizard is small, and his cat chases him around a bit, and then they go back on their unrelated expedition in the Andes. Okay. Every episode is like this. 99 times. Okay, I gotta give credit where credit is due. These episodes may only be seven minutes long, but they really make them feel like they're a half hour. As a seven minute cartoon, the format they shifted to was much more gag based than story based. Like that's what I call pizza to go. <laughs> He's dead Shaggy. Scooby doesn't come back from that. Everything I love about classic Scooby-Doo is gone. The things that make it cool are gone. It's much brighter. The music is silly. And it's based in Scooby and Shaggy's antics. They neutered Scooby. For the first time ever, Scooby-Doo has lost its atmosphere. The premises are very shallow. They usually just have to get chased by something somewhere. But the reason why they get chased every episode, usually it's because they just go up to people and start f***ing with them. Like Scrappy sees this pirate and just randomly goes, I'm gonna f*** with him. <laughs> The episode that takes the cake is Scooby Dooby Guru. They're touring the Taj Mahal and Shaggy's like, Gee, this sh sure is stupid. Nothing real could be this gruesome. And Scooby goes right up to the guard and starts f***ing with him. Why? If Scrappy is a completely f***ing awful person, don't blame him. Look at his influences. In this episode, they clap at how much trouble Scrappy has caused. So they trip the guard, he knocks into the statue of Vishnu, and understandably, he's angry. They run, but Scrappy keeps f***ing with him. They break into people's houses a lot. Like, uh, whose dinner was it? That was my dinner! And understandably, the owner is pissed. But this dude's just so great. He's over the top and weird. It's like the gang breaks into this guy's house and he's excited to see them. It's time for them to get f***ed with. Good work, Scooby! He's trapped! Really? Every line that comes out of his mouth is gold. There he is! Aha! And watch this, they do the same joke twice in a row and it works both times. Lost! I've lost them! No, you didn't! Really? Here's your triple burger. Thanks! You know, you're kinda cute. <laughs> There's this other episode that's unexpectedly really funny. Scooby makes this big tough guy mad, so he and his lackey start chasing Shaggy and Scooby. They're hilarious. Well, we almost made it. Oh, shut up, Wilbur. That's a big 10 for. Here's an interesting one. We meet Scooby's grandpa. He likes Scrappy, but thinks Shaggy and Scooby are total losers. His house is haunted. They need to catch the ghost. Oh my God, it's great grandpa Scooby. This is the Scooby lore I needed. Scrappy's birth? Oh God, Ruby dude really wasn't expecting this turn in life. Turns out Scrappy's been a jerk since day one because he learned the behavior directly from Scooby and Shaggy. There's some weird episodes like this poodle who's all for Scooby. Hi, handsome. Oh, you're cute. 
<laughs> I am? Yeah. He competes with this bulldog for her love. This bulldog's also a reoccurring bully type character. She wants to get married at the end, but Scooby's not about that family life. He leaves her at the altar. Scooby Dooby Doo. <laughs> Scooby do be doing that. I don't dislike Scooby and Shaggy, but their antics really only play well against the creepy, spooky, slower paced atmosphere of the other half of the show. But when done right, it's very charming. This is not done right. It's old, it's unexpressive, except for this frame for some reason. Why is this the most appealing frame in classic Scooby-Doo? The show is not creative, it's not interesting. It's just really, really tired. I'm tired. How many episodes do I have left? 57. I'm not even halfway done. Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo, more like Poopy-Doo and Crappy-Doo. This is what this show has done to me. My brain is just gone. This show just tries to avoid, at all costs, any sort of logical sequencing with its storytelling. Ten minutes, gotcha! I'll be back in 10 minutes, fellas. I'm gonna take a dip in the pool. It's every moment of every episode. Like, I can't prepare you for what happens here. Oh no, I must have dozed off for an hour. Uncle Scooby, Shaggy! Uncle Scooby, Shaggy! Yoo-hoo! I fell asleep! I had to pause the episode for like 30 minutes after that. I had to cool down. I overheated trying to process that. And then Scrappy has to take care of them and then they accidentally get entered into a baby contest, I guess for determining the best baby. Uh, then they're magically adults again and Scrappy is all tuckered out from the long day. The judge realizes Scrappy was a baby the whole time. So he wins the baby award for being such a baby. The end. Oh, in this episode, they run across some carnivorous plants. They're running away, but of course they have to stop the eat. Noise! I can't move, Scoob! Okay. Oh, so they're cleaning a clock, then Scooby starts flying everywhere, they go into the future. Yeah, okay, all right, that's okay. Clock, time, time travel, I can make that connection. But what about this? If this experiment works, my studies of Stone Age men will be complete. They do the disguise gag every episode, sometimes three times an episode. We get Cactus Scrappy, Football Scrappy, Chef Scrappy, Fire Chief Scrappy, Pilot Scrappy, Cowboy Scrappy, Werewolf Scrappy, Lion Scrappy, Prego Scrappy, Devo Scrappy, Scrunchy Scrappy, Tarzan Scrappy, Elton John Scrappy, White Rabbit Scrappy, Tin Man Scrappy, Detective Scrappy, Clown Scrappy, Mother f***ing Lobster Scrappy. Oh my god, I never want to hear the phrase puppy power ever again. <laughs> Why did they run into a bear so many times? It's never the same bear. You even had death. Devil Bear back in season one. You think any other bear is gonna be scary after Devil Bear? Maybe like actual bear. But how do you get that in a Scooby-Doo episode? From now on, we'll stick to pots of Irish stew. Right, Scoob? Yeah. <laughs> Scooby-Dooby stew. That line was a heavy pill for Scooby to swallow. I mean, look at that empty husk of a dog. This show used to mean something to Scooby, but then it all got away from him. It's just a paycheck now. He'd quit, but so many people work on the show. How would they feed their family if he chose to leave? People depend on him. If only he could depend on himself. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh wow, Uncle Scooby. Boy, oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. You don't need to get excited about everywhere you go, Scrappy. Wow, oh wow. What a neat building. They didn't have to use the classic music forever. But other, something else than other than this. Out of boy, Uncle Scooby. Let's get out of here. This little jingle gets stuck in my head constantly now, and if you thought Puppy Power was annoying, it's not even Scrappy's most used catchphrase. How about a lesson in addition? Star creature plus Scrappy equals plus 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 plus
The best part about watching a really brainless show is eventually it just becomes white noise. Your brain is so numbed, you're just sitting there totally deactivated and none of it happens. Like, what's going on, Scoob? I don't know. <laughs> An unexpected funny joke, line delivery, cut, piece of animation, slips through it all, and you start laughing. An unexpectedly funny joke that lands here, lands harder than the most masterfully crafted written jokes in the best, funniest ever comedies. Yeah! Oh no, they come back! But there's a good chance that's the Scrappy Delirium talking. You know what, Sea Monkeys, I think you're right. It does pick up in season four a little bit. At this point, it was no longer the Richie Rich and Scooby-Doo show. It was the Scooby Scrappy Puppy Hour. Scooby-Doo aired alongside the puppy's new adventures, but Scooby-Doo wasn't just Scooby-Doo anymore. Instead, episodes were comprised of three Scooby segments. Two segments starring Scooby and Shaggy called the Scary Scooby Funnies, and the other was the Scrappy and Yabba Doo Show. The show takes place in the Old West, all the way back in 1983. Scrappy and his other uncle Yabba Doo are accompanied by Deputy Dusty, who, like Shaggy, Shaggy is a bit of a coward. They catch the bad guy together and give Deputy Dusty the credit cause golly, Yabba is just happy to be there. I would like Yabba, but it's a real bold move to name a character after Fred Flintstone's catchphrase. Oh boy, chili snack, yippity yabbity doo. Yabba doo says yippity yabbity doo, but you know, tradition calls for yabba dabba doo, but you can't use that because it was a bold move. Also, there's this really cool alien. Welcome to Earth. Greetings, Scrappy. I am Zylon from Planet Zither. Season four brings back a lot of the classic Scooby music and uses darker atmospheres, which is much more fitting for the characters. It's animated a little bit better too. When Scooby moves, it's a lot more like a dog. I saw this Medium article asking why Scrappy walked on two legs when Scooby didn't, but if you did your research, you would see that Scooby often walks on two legs in these seasons, if not more than four legs. I hate it. The plot lines are a bit more grounded too. They're working for Shaggy's uncle now, going on all sorts of wacky missions. And the setting alternates. Sometimes there's more of a high school setting. That sure was a silly mistake making two dates for the same day. Norville's out here putting the shag and shaggy. Uh-oh, what's he gonna do? Be honest with her? No, they're gonna continue just to f*** with people. Dress Scooby as a dude to be her date. Invite another girl along to watch her embarrass herself. This I gotta see. Oh, but Scrappy is the completely awful person. It's funny because I find the quality of jokes haven't changed, but I find myself uh, wanting to pay attention and try to laugh more just because there's some semblance of a plot. You know, just like a little scrumptious piece of cheese to keep me interested. This is serviceable, not good, but I feel the tingling of my brain cells starting to move again. So season one was fine. Seasons two and three were just an endless void of nothing and watching them back to back made me feel like a waste of space. These shows are not good for your self-confidence. Season four was passable, but so little of what impacts the quality of the show has to do with Scrappy. Scrappy and the occasional fun villain are the best parts of seasons two to four. I mean, they held them back in the first season, but here he's off the leash. No, Scrappy, like, leave him alone! He just murdered a man. That's not saying, however, that I enjoyed these shows. Scooby-Doo needed to get better for a long time. It didn't need new gimmicks or changes. It just needed to be better. And that's actually what they tried to do next. So next time, join me and Sea Monkeys as we look at way too much Scooby-Doo. Maybe we'll make some new friends and see some old ones because Daphne's coming back. I'm tired. I'm stressed. I'll see you next week.